Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Look at it. Making Gotham great again. Oh, Gotham is rotting, and we're making it great again. We're still demonetized by YouTube, so support what we do. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Go to GrahamElwood.com. They're all in the show notes. They're scrolling below. So I did a video last week right before Armenian uh, Genocide Remembrance Day. We just had it. It was April 24th. I'd usually do a video every year talking about it. And I did a video last week saying, I don't think Joe Biden is going to recognize Armenian, the Armenian Genocide. And I was wrong. And I'm so glad I'm wrong. Like I don't want to be uh, uh, about stuff that's bad. I don't want to be right. So I'm glad he, he recognized it Saturday. It was a big deal. This is a very big deal. Biden has formally recognized the Armenian genocide becoming the first U.S. president to do so. Quick backstory for those of you who don't know, we're talking about what the Ottoman Empire, which is now Turkey, did to the Armenians in 1915. They did a systematic genocide. The Turkish government has always maintained, oh, it was just an off. This is just what happened. People die in war. And there's all this evidence. There's... Armenian scholars, there's even Turkish scholars, there's German, there's all these scholars that have done the research to say this is a genocide. In every country in the world, except three, now two, but prior to Saturday, prior to Joe Biden, it was only Turkey, the US, and Israel. <laughs> yeah, Israel still won't acknowledge the Armenian genocide. But I'm glad, I'm glad. Now, when Joe Biden did this, I was like, wow. And I talked to a good friend of mine uh, and who follows this quite well, friend of the show, Ken Wolf. And we were like, what is the, what is the, what is Joe Biden's, like, I, I doubt Joe Biden is doing this out of the goodness of his heart. <laughs> There's got to be some reason behind it. Now, even if he's just doing it for political reasons, fine. It's still, this is still a good thing. And I hope it's not just, Lip service. The Democrats, I mean, the Democrats' bread and butter is lip service with no action. So we're going to recognize the genocide and then do nothing. Nothing changes. But um, I did talk to like a friend of a friend, this, this woman who's Armenian. She made a good point. She goes, well, what this does is now it allows Hollywood to actually do stories about the Armenian genocide. There was a movie that came out a couple years ago um, and it was an excellent movie, but it was hidden. Because Turkey spends a lot of money in Hollywood to make sure the Armenian genocide never gets told. Um, and it was a movie that was like, if this if this was about the Holocaust, it would have gotten a bunch of nominations. It was a very well-written, well-written, well-made movie. Um, and I forget the name. You know what? Actually, I'm going to look this up right now because I, I don't want to talk about this movie and not know about it. So we're just going to look this movie up real quick. We're going to go to ecosia.org, which is a non for profit search, search engine. Don't use CIA Google. Um, Armenian um, genocide movie. Uh, there's one movie called Intent to Destroy The Promise um, Os with Oscar Isaac. That's a really good movie. Watch the movie The Promise with Oscar. Oscar Isaac is a fantastic actor. Um, and he, uh, you know, if there wasn't all this pressure from the Turkish government and had the, you know, Obama recognize the Armenian genocide like he said he was going to do when he ran in 2008, he went to all these Armenian churches and said, oh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to recognize. And then he didn't. Um, and I'm going to show you a map in a second what the geopolitical landscape is and why we haven't in the past. But I'm like, I was talking to my friend, Ken Wolf, and I was like, Ken, who's very knowledgeable about this subject. I said, why do you think, why do you, th you know, we were both like, well, I wonder why Biden. And he goes, well, Graham, I think it has to do with Gavin Newsom's getting recalled. Gavin Newsom, there's a recall effort. Gavin Newsom is a Democrat. He's the Democratic governor of California. And there's a big recall movement, mainly by Republicans in a largely blue state. Um, 
And they did this back with Gray Davis, who was a Democratic governor, who was an awful governor, but they did that. And then they got Republican Arnold Schwarzenegger in there who didn't do much at all. Um, he was just all talk, just a celebrity front man. <laughs> um, and then we had Jerry Brown, who was okay, but during during Jerry Brown's term, Jerry Brown basically went from like progressive to more corporate Democrat on a lot of issues. But my friend said, Graham, California has the largest population of Armenians outside of Armenia. The reason is, is because after, you know, a lot of Armenians emigrated here uh, to, the, to the U.S. after the genocide and have been for a long time. So I just wanted to show you, California has one of the largest Armenian diaspora communities. The Armeni Americans Community Survey of 2020 reported that 252,000 Armenians are in the state, just over half of the Armenians in the U.S. So there's roughly a half a million Armenians in all of the U.S. 250,000 of them are in the state of California. The major populations are San Francisco, Fresno, Los Angeles, uh, Hollywood, where there is a little Armenia town of like, uh, there's little Armenia, Glendale, Burbank, Pasadena, Montebello. Now Gl Glendale is, is like a very Armenian, uh, suburb of Los Angeles basically and Burbank and Pasadena, Montebello. Um, so we were talking, I'm like, Oh, I get it. So Joe Biden because, because, because since Saturday, so now all these Armenians are like, Hey, we're, we, we're, we're, we love Joe Biden and rightfully so. Like, no, every president has, has said, no, no one, no one has recognized this thing. And it's been a hundred years and no American president has recognized this in a hundred years. So they're like, we're down with Joe Biden, which again, I'm glad he did it. All my criticisms of Joe Biden, I would love for Joe Biden to prove me wrong. I would love for Joe Biden to cut the military budget in half. I would love for Joe Biden to, to give us Medicare for all, which he could have done by executive order. I would love for Joe Biden to, again, via executive order, could have forgiven all student loan debt. All federal, 85% of all student loans are federally backed. He could just say, you don't have to owe that anymore, which would infuse trillions of dollars into the economy. Joe Biden hasn't done that yet. I would love for Joe Biden to stop bombing everybody. I would love for Joe Biden to stop sanctioning Iran and Venezuela. I don't want to be wrong, right. I don't want to sit here and go, I told you so. I would love to be proven wrong at all of these things that I think Joe Biden is never going to do because I think he's a corporate Democrat. His whole career is awful. That's why I'm critical of Joe Biden. I had no faith in Donald Trump. Donald Trump's a piece of shit. He didn't do it. He could have done it at the end of his, I thought he was going to do it just to stick it to the Democrats. Which. If Trump had half a brain, he should have done it. So then Armenians wouldn't be feeling so beholden to Gavin Newsom. But Trump's not that smart. <laughs> because this also happened. Gavin Newsom acknowledges Armenian genocide. Why is Gavin Newsom doing that? Is it the right thing to do? Do I believe that Gavin Newsom and Joe Biden are doing the right thing? No, this is Nancy Pelosi's nephew. <laughs> this is all politics. Hey, if it if it if it if it helps change the culture, and Hollywood can start making movies, and we can have a national conversation, and more importantly, non-Armenians are like, oh wow, that was a genocide. We should have recognized this a long time ago. I'm glad we're recognizing it. If that's what happens, great. But I believe. The Biden tact reason Biden did this is to help prevent him from getting recalled. Um, because this, they just qualify. So the, they got enough signatures to put a recall vote to happen. So it's going to happen. There's going to be a vote. And I had to break this into the map into two parts. But these are the counties that fueled the Gavin Newsom recall. Okay. These are primarily more rural, right? Counties that are tend to be more red. There's not enough population in these in these counties, right? Because all the major cities are along the coast, right? This is San Francisco, the Bay Area. This is Sacramento, right over here. 
this is we're gonna I'm gonna show you. So down here again, this is LA County, this is even San Diego County. Now, Orange County is more conservative. These inland empire places are more conservative. But as I just showed you, LA County, large percentage of Armenians. So in LA County, gets get what's in LA County as we that, that Burbank, Glendale, Hollywood, Pasadena, right? Big Armenian communities. San Francisco Bay Area, big Armenian communities. There's and there's more people in these counties than these counties. So they did this. And hey, great. I'm, I'm again, I'm not angry. I'm glad they did this, but I'm just showing this is the real motive. What's going to happen pretty soon? Gavin Newsom recognized the Armenian genocide is to help get enough votes. Cause now, I mean, every Armenian is going to go, okay, you guys recognize the genocide. Like that's what they're going to do. And that's, that's fair. I get it. I, I, if you know, if I was Armenian, I would be like, Hey man, you recognize the genocide. So I don't care what else you do. I'm going to acknowledge this. They've been fighting for this for a hundred years. So this is a big deal. So what's going to happen pretty soon is Joe Biden's going to come out to California, put his arm around Gavin Newsom and say, Hey, I'm so glad we both recognize the Armenian genocide, right? Isn't he the guy that should remain governor? And they, they're going to anticipate that the vote any blue will do crowd. In addition to the Armenians are going to be enough to push back the conservatives, which don't have enough numbers in the state. That's my guess. That's my guess. And I want to point out, as I pointed out before, this is the geopolitical landscape in that part of the world and why this is significant. This is why America hasn't done this and so has, has never acknowledged the Armenian genocide. So I just want to show you this. So this is the US, the largest exporter of weapons to Turkey. So we give a lot of weapons to Turkey. Now we're on, we're not on great terms with Turkey because of Edwin. So it's sort of a little bit of a tactic and they, we have bases there, but we we're America. We have bases. We have 800 bases worldwide. We could move the bases somewhere else like Armenia. <laughs> so get ready, Armenia. <laughs> Joe Biden just did you a solid. He might be asking you to put some missile bases or some troops on your land and the Armenians are going to go, okay, sure. I'm just saying, I'm just looking at the, I'm just looking at the political chessboard. Um, largest military assistance. Now we give $3.8 billion to Israel who also, well, does not recognize the Armenian genocide. I don't know that they're going to, they're going to change on this. I'm not sure. Um, and they sell military weapons to, uh, Azerbaijan. Now there was just that conflict on the disputed Artsakh region, which Turkey was helping to fuel. And America largely did nothing. That's why America did nothing when they were like basically trying to do, or Edroin, it seems like kind of a psycho was trying to like, a lot of Armenians were saying, oh, he's just trying to finish the genocide now. So Russia, um, does military sales to all three countries. Iran is the only, has the only open border with Armenia. So it's one of the reasons we didn't get behind Armenia during this. We just kind of sat this out and the, and the American media barely covered this. I covered this, but the American media barely covered it. So what could happen? This is just as I watch, as I watch the American empire operate, how it operates. So let's say Turkey, which I, I'll just say this to the Turkish government and any Turks watching this admitting fault is not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of strength. It's a position of strength to go. We were wrong. Let's make this right. Turkey could really come out to be the hero in all this. If Turkey really wants to like keep its honor, they should say, you know what, what happened a hundred years ago was awful. We're sorry. Let's make peace. That would be the that would be the biggest boldest move. That is an actual position of strength to come and go, I'm sorry. What happened a hundred years ago was wrong. We're going to recognize it. And look, I did videos in the Artsakh region, like Azerbaijan tries to claim that the Artsakh region is theirs. There's evidence going back centuries to Armenian churches, Armenian grave sites, Armenian historical sites. So the Artsakh region should go to Armenia and you could do this all peacefully without anybody losing 
face. It's a position of strength. Azerbaijan, it's a position of strength to go, you know what? We don't want any more war bloodshed. You have that region. Let's get together. Let's trade. Let's just be business. Let's be business people. Let's open our borders so we can all do business with each other. Everybody wins. If everybody's doing business, everybody wins. That's like Dubai does that. They're just like, okay. They just became like, let's just be smart business people. So Turkey, it's a position of strength to say what happened a hundred years ago was awful. We acknowledge it. And let's, let's be peaceful. Because if you do that and Armenians still go all oh, the hell with the Turks, well, then you got to go, Hey, wait a minute. Now they're, you know, you, 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 they're giving, they're, they're, they're offering the olive branch. If someone says I'm completely sorry. And if you're a Turkish person watching this, that's the stance you should take. That's the, that's the honest, that's the stance. Like it would, if, if it would be like me as an American going, look, we didn't really take land from the native Americans. They, they get, you know, it was just a war. That's what happened. It was a war we won. And I, you know, I don't know, like it'd be like not acknowledging the genocide that, that happened to the native Americans. I feel better when I acknowledge that as an American, I feel better when I say, you know, we have systemic racism in this country because we did slavery and genocide. And the 13th amendment was just basically legalizing you know, the, the, the hunting of, of black people, even though slavery ended. And basically we just, we just moved slavery from actual owning a person, a slave when that was made illegal, um, by the emancipation proclamation, we then said, oh, well, we're going to, we're going to build this loophole into it so that we can round up black people for private, for prison labor. And we've been doing this since the end of the civil war. I want that changed. All the lies I was told. And if you grew up in Turkey, you were propagandized. I've been propagandized in America. I've been completely propagandized in America. Watch our show, Government Secrets. I was propagandized. I mean, Christopher Columbus was a good guy. No, he was awful. I've read his, Christopher Columbus's own journal is evil. He was awful. We need to acknowledge this. Acknowledging the truth actually sets you free. Holding on to this, this is old, scared, oh, we'll never acknowledge the genocide. That's an old, scared mentality. It's a mentality of strength to come from a place of, of apology, making an amends, forgiveness, and love is a position of strength. So I really hope that any Turks or Azerbaijans watching this want to come from a position of strength and extending your hand to an Armenian actually is the most strong position you could ever. Cause then you put it on them, right? So this whole region could have peace and prosperity, but we do have the American empire. What I hope doesn't happen is that I hope they don't go, all right, we're pulling the bases out of here. We're putting them there because we want to roll into Iran. That I don't want. That could happen because that's how America rolls. They strong arm. Hey, Armenia, we recognize your genocide. Now we're putting troops on the ground there. We're going to roll across the border into Iran. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Or that this gets, this gets, uh, America did this to try to get into some proxy war with Russia or Iran or whatever, like what's happening in Yemen. So once again, I'm glad Joe Biden did this. I'm glad he did it. I'm glad he did it. But we're gonna pay close attention to what the real motives are. It's a good thing, either whatever his motives were, it's still good for the Armenian people and it's good for America to have a soul, <laughs> to try to get our soul back because it's been taken away by war and genocide, our own genocide that we've committed. So we just got to own this. And let's hope at least people in Hollywood can start doing movies about the Armenian genocide and talk about it and maybe start brokering some peace in that part of the world rather than th that map that's just America profiting from war and bombs and all this crap. And same with Russia. Like, let's just cut this shit. Let's just cut the shit and all get along. Let's figure out, let's spend billions of dollars on how to 
like get us out of climate collapse. Let's get rid of all nuclear weapons. Like let's let, let's get into some disarmament treaties and just be done with them. Let's do that. So this is a step in the right direction. And, you know, Biden probably did it to get more footing in the Middle East and to protect Gavin Newsom from being recalled <laughs> by Republicans in California. So I know it's complicated, but also, I, I, as I say in the show, I, I don't, I have no problem admitting I, I was wrong. I didn't think Biden was going to do it because of because of that map that I showed you. I thought that was going to, but no, I, I don't always get it right. I'll admit it when I'm wrong, uh, and no one is telling me what I can and cannot say. So I'm going to keep talking about this, and when I'm when I'm wrong, I'll admit it. And we'll see what else. Maybe I'm wrong about all of this. Maybe I'm wrong about, maybe, I don't know. But that's the information we have here. And I'm speaking to you honestly because Boeing doesn't buy airtime on this. APAC doesn't buy airtime on this show, right? The NRA doesn't buy air airtime on this show. Big Pharma doesn't buy airtime on this show. So I'm giving you my opinion, my honest, based on the facts that I that I go through. So- Thanks for watching the show, everybody. Follow the money, connect the dots, get to the truth. And congrats to all the Armenians out there for getting the genocide recognized. Shave your knuckles for justice. Ba-boom. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're unsubs we've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.